Hi, it's Matt. Today we're going to show you how to test the speed sensor on your GE washer. It's responsible for checking the speed of the motor and relaying it to the control board. If it's not working right, it can cause the washer to go out of balance, but don't worry, we'll help you get it sorted out. If you like the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any of our how-to videos. Let's get started. With over 2 million products in stock and the know-how to help you do it yourself, we are AppliancePartsPros.com. To do this testing, you'll need a quarter inch nut driver, a multimeter with narrow pin extensions, a 3 inch socket, and a ratchet with an extension. Remember, safety comes first. Make sure you unplug the washer or turn it off at the circuit breakers to prevent electrocution. Also remember to turn off the hot and cold water supplies and remove the drain hose. Make sure to remove your fill hoses by loosening them up with some pliers and then unscrewing them by hand. You want to make sure you put a towel down so you catch any water that may come out and also label the hoses so you remember which one's hot and which one's cold. First thing we're going to check on the speed sensor is whether it has a good connection and if it's damaged where it's mounted on the motor. We're going to tilt the washer back so we can get underneath. Just want to carefully tilt it back. You can put something underneath it or put a towel on the top and rest it against the wall but just tilt it far enough back so you can get underneath. Now that we have the machine tilted back, we have access to the cover. We're gonna use a three inch socket with an extension and a ratchet to take out the bolts that hold it on. Once you have the cover out of the way, we have access to the speed sensor. It's right here on the motor. We're just gonna make sure the wire harness has a good connection and you just wanna shake the speed sensor around and kind of move it on the motor. There's little tabs on there that hold it to the motor. And if it's not held in properly, it won't read properly. If it's damaged, you'll have to change it out. If it looks okay, we can go up top and test it electrically. Now we're gonna put the cover back on. You just wanna line it up and put it in place. Then we're gonna use the three inch socket with the ratchet and extension to put the bolts in. And you wanna make sure on the bottom one, you put the ground wire on. Then we can set the washer back on its feet, plug it back in, and run the diagnostic test. To put it into diagnostic mode to check for any error codes, you want to look underneath the machine and see if you can find the tech sheet. If not, you can just follow along, but just be aware your model might be different. We're just going to press the start button for 10 seconds until the lights come on. Once the lights come on, you want to look at these six lights right here and see what's flashing and not flashing so we can compare it to the tech sheet. Once you have the code from the display we're going to look at the list and you want to remember that the colors are opposite so light is dark and dark is light so for our code is 26 which is out of balance. Now that we've checked the code and it's 26 related to the out of balance so we're going to go in back and check the speed sensor at the control board. Then we're going to unplug the machine real quick just to be safe and use the quarter inch nut driver to take out the two screws that hold the access panel on. And then lift up on the bottom of the panel slide it to the right and pull it off. Now we're going to lift the console up. Just want to pull it back a little bit then lift it up. And then we're just going to carefully rotate it over so we have access to the control board. Now we're going to plug the washer back in and test the control board with live voltage. So extreme care should always be taken to protect against electrical shock which can potentially cause serious injury. Please don't do any live voltage testing if you're uncomfortable using a multimeter around live voltage. We're going to work on this wire harness in the upper left corner. The six wires are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as you're looking down at them. We're going to use the meter to test them. We're going to test in DC voltage. So you want to make sure your meter is set to the proper DC range. The first one we're going to test is from 
3, which is the orange, over to 5, which is the yellow. And we should get around 9.6 volts. Then we're going to test wires 1 through 5, which is the blue to the yellow again. We're just going to stick the probes in and leave them there. And then we have to go around front and open up the lid a little bit and spin the tub. You want to make sure that the voltage is jumping around while the tub is spinning, and then it should settle around 4.5. Ours looks good. So we're going to unplug the washer again. Then we can flip the console over and put it back in place. We can grab the access panel, put it back on. Then we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put the screws back in to hold it down. Now that we have the console back in place, we can put the fill hoses back on, plug it back in, turn the water on, and put the drain hose back in. If your speed sensor tested bad, you can take your model number and search for the correct part at appliancepartspros.com. Most orders arrive within a couple business days. Make sure you let us know how the repair went in the comments. Thanks for your support, and we'll see you in the next one.